As most of you know, a competitive clan battle can get really, um, can get really, really freaking dank. And here I've got one of the timelines from my old clan where it's just like, uh, oh man, my head just exploded. This timeline is not actually the one that made me quit competitive CB, but I have to say, like, if I had to use this timeline, I probably would have quit as well. Like my guys, look at this. When Kyoka's staff points at three o'clock, you want this UB to be free frames after Lady's charm animation starts for her AA at 035. And then after after that frame perfect this, you have around 10 frames for errors. And then you've got like the Nanaka's Stardust magic has landed, H Misaki's AA hits for 7038, some really dank stuff like this. And so it's only when you really want to run stuff like this or potentially something like this, I honestly don't even know what's going on here. It's when you actually have to like use these kinds of tools that you start thinking about bricking or equipment gearing. And so in this video, I want to give you guys all of the tools necessary to go from either casual all the way up to the competitive spectrum. Hopefully after this video, no matter where you sit or where you want to be, you will know the answers to like, oh, what stars should a particular unit be? Or perhaps what equipments or refines like I need to get a character to stay at. Don't optimize New Year's Yui, stuff like that. Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today I wanted to talk through a whole bunch of different guides, a collection of guides that will help you with all of your equipment and gearing and skills and stuff. But most of all, this should hopefully address some of your concerns in terms of like, oh, I'm going to brick this or brick that. And so I'm probably going to call this like the anti-brick guide. Uh, well, that's not strictly true. Sometimes I'm going to tell you to brick yourself. And I mean that in a kind way, okay? All right, so before we get started, I wanted to give thanks to all of the creators of these documents so first of all, we have Chocolate over here. Chocolate is a very prominent member of the community. He's put together guides like this, as well as the Lunar Tower guides. So to your boy Chocolate, thank you very much. And so with that, we have Miss Nyara. Miss Nyara is known for these rank comparison guides, as well as these UE guides that I use quite often because it's very nicely formatted. And so again, shout out to Miss Nyara. And so lastly, I want to give thanks to Mars, who put together this one over here, which is essentially an all-in-one spreadsheet, a very nice visual representation presentation of pretty much like everything that could possibly affect a character from UE levels to skills to equipment to stars stuff like that. All right and so before we get into any of these resources I want to talk again about this guy over here. The fact of the matter is is that if you don't do any of this you don't read these timelines you don't have to execute them you don't have to go frame perfect stuff like that and if you play on auto then there is actually like no way to really brick your characters. To be honest Princess Connect was made to be a very casual game and so slam everything, hit auto, and just watch your waifus do work. That is very much the philosophy of a more casual player. And so if you kind of fit in this bucket where you don't look at any timelines at all, or you just want to be ultra casual about it and don't think too much, just slam everything. Hit optimize, hit those five stars, and just literally refine everything. And so the next step up would be things like this one over here, which is the lab by all of these clans. This spreadsheet was released for CB11, and like it does have these timelines, but as you you can see they're not ultra ultra hardcore like the one that I just showed you and so this is probably where I would recommend most people sit because I think it's the best balance between like oh you're probably not going to brick anything but it's probably going to be fringe cases so for example like your maho if you've gone over level 100 ex skill then it's already bricked apparently as well as your yui so not your new year's yui your yui that's honestly like really freaking insane so yeah if you and your clan do use these kinds of timelines like just a little bit they're not like strictly easier but they certainly aren't like the ultra ultra optimized down to like the freaking three frames kind of thing then this video is probably very much for you all of these resources covers that kind of thinking now lastly we have like again these guys over here when it gets really dank when it gets like ultra ultra specific and things really come down to like the frame by frame then you're probably in a competitive cb plan that is like constantly aiming for top 10 or top 25 something like that so with all of that being said let me introduce you first to this guy over here. So again, this is Chocolate's sheet. And as you can see, he's got like pretty clear cut recommendations, right? Gear 12, 4, stars 5. From a general purpose point of view, like kind of uh, if you're just like looking for something to slam, this is probably the right guide. I really do like this guide because everything is color coded so you can see like where his mind is at. On top of that, it's got 
some rationale on this right hand side over here but also some of these purposes and their respective importances with regards to CB and PvP. So for this guide all of the characters are ordered according to range from front all the way to back as you can see that is ascending. However the thing about this one is that it doesn't have like the refines as well as the skills. And so for this one over here chocolates guide I would say if you want to go slammy slammy then just slam according to this one here. Now that's not to say that chocolates guide is oversimplified he's actually done one that is on the other side of the spectrum where it is like really really ultra fine-tuned. However we will get to that a little bit later. Alright so moving through over to this one over here. So this is Miss Niara's gear comparison guide and so what she's done is essentially compare the gear that we can currently get right now which is 12.4 and have those differences to like other gear types such as 11.6 or 10.5 or 9.5. All of these laid out so that you can see what exactly the differences are. All of these rows are differences with 12.4. That means that this row here Ruka are 11.6. 11.6 compared to 12.4 has 6% less heal. It also has 13 less accuracy but to compensate she actually gains physical HP and magical HP. However on top of these differences she also does add the notes as well as the next optimal so if you do hit like some of these ranks 12.4 or you accidentally brick something. So for example Makoto she is really really prone to bricking like I'm pretty sure she never goes to 10 at all like rank 10. The next optimal is pretty much saying like where you can kind of save yourself pretty much. So this column here column M is actually like your guide to unbricking yourself if you do end up breaking yourself. Otherwise what you could do is you could have a look at the numbers yourself and just do those comparisons. For example Mwimi over here 9.5 compared to 12.4. 12.4 is always going to be superior because of all of these stat increases. 12.4 also has all of these stats over 10.5 and 12.4 has TP boost as well as attack and crit with the loss of a little bit of dodge and drain. So therefore with all of that logic 12.4 is superior if she survives. And so yeah like the thing that I really like about this sheet over here is that you can kind of come to the own conclusions yourself. Using that kind of logic that I just used there you can actually go ahead and like tweak your builds to whatever suits you right. A lot of these units are actually pretty clear cut but some of them aren't actually that clear. So what she's done is she's categorized like the 12.4 is clearly the best rank and then if I go up a bit 12.4 is mostly identical and then 11.6 is significantly better and so therefore this is like your kind of red flag to be like oh like this might brick you and if I go up a little bit more the first one that we were looking at was variable optimal rank. So yeah hopefully you understand how to use this guide over here I think like in the right hands it's really really powerful. However for the vast majority of people you're probably just going to be needing to look at column L and column M so you've got the recommendation over here as well as your pathway to potentially unbricking your character with column M. And so with that I want to move over to Mars's recommendations. Now to be honest especially because I am a lot more casual nowadays. This is probably the spreadsheet that I bust open the most because it is just so freaking visual. So just looking at the Lima row for example, she is recommended to be at 4 stars plus with a rank of at least 12. Now as for the equipment, this is where I really like it because I think this is such a great way to visualize it. If you have a look at these 6 cells, you'll quickly realize that they pretty much correspond to what you see in the game itself. So what this one over here is saying is essentially okay we want to get to rank 12 and then we also want to equip the top right the middle right, the bottom right, and the bottom left equipments, and then proceed to go on and refine them all to five. I think it's brilliant and it's probably why like people like me, the lazy people, would appreciate this the most. On the other hand, we've got this one over here which is alternate rank, and so this is pretty much like your, uh, if you're going to use this character for other things for example, like I know the biggest example will be Ruka, where for Ruka you really want to keep her at three stars for CB, but you do want her at five stars for PvP. And so the whole philosophy of of like are you a CB main or a PvP main like that's gonna really really start like oh it's already started right especially with Ruka. It's definitely applied to other units such as like H Misaki and we will see a lot more of this to come however I digress. And so coming back to the alternate rank well there's not really much left to talk about for that one so let's have a look at the last kind of like segment. This one as we can tell from the legend up here it represents the level of your UE then the levels of your UB, EX, skill 1 and skill 2. Now obviously the Lima one isn't a great example so let's have a look at this one down 
down here. And so with this number at the 30 in the UE box, what Mars is pretty much saying is leave your Jun's UE at level 30. However, with the rest of these plus signs around, you can just very, very clearly optimize the rest. So going through a couple of other examples, we've got this one over here. It's got a top right hand corner box of one. And so just aligning that with this legend up here, you can see that what Mars is trying to say is that we should leave Ruka's EX skill at level one. And then so just like making our way downtown a little bit, we've got a level 30 UE for Akino. We've got a 130 UE for Hiyori. And then down, down, down a bit more, you are starting to see some of these bricks. So Summer Kokoro, the EX skill should be level one. The Kokoro UE should be level one. The Akari UE level one. And then when I come down to like the mages, as well as the healers over here, you start seeing the red text and then you're like, oh, wow. Why, why are all of these level 100? Like, I don't know about you guys, but I've long since hit optimize on my Yui probably like 10 years ago. On the other hand, we've got the Maho with the EX skill at level 100 and the Chika with the skill two at level one. Up over here, Summer Suzume, skill one at level one. Like seriously, it's a lot of these, these really intricate requirements that really made me just go like, all right, you know what? I'm, I'm a freaking check out, man. Not to mention that in the context of this spreadsheet, like I'm technically already like gigabrit. So yeah, I decided like, you know what? I'll just follow the spreadsheet. I'm cool. But otherwise I'm not going to sweat it because I'm not going to be doing stuff like this. Uh, probably not for a very, very long time. Not unless Crunchyroll comes out and are like, okay guys, we've got a CB, a clan battle cash tournament. In which case we will all be esports gamers then. So honestly, that would be pretty cool. All right. So moving back to Mars's recommendations, I don't think there's too much left to be said about this one. However, as you guys can see, what is missing from Mars's is a lot of the notes. Very, very little rationale, like all of the rationale that you could get from Miss Niara's, you can't really get from Mars's. And so that's why I can say like, although I prefer Mars's, I can't really say it's the best one. So most people are gonna have to actually go through all three of these spreadsheets to really ascertain as to the best rank, the best skill levels and all of that and understand the rationale as to why. Now. I've covered like the three core spreadsheets, in my opinion, the three best resources in terms of equipments and anti-bricking and all of that. And so what I have saved up for last is this guy over here, which is how to esports unit builds in a casual waifu collector. I believe this one is also by Chocolate, who is quite an experienced JP player. And so what he's done here is essentially have a lot of these like unit profiles is probably the best way to put it. He's again put the color coding in. So UB is green, the S1 taunt is green. And then as you can see, the EX skill and the UE are red. So these hopefully you'll intuitively get, don't level them. And if I scroll back up a little bit, you will see that we do have the color coding over here. So in a nutshell, if you really, really want to esports it, and if you really, really want to go like competitive, competitive top 10, even pushing for rank one, then this is probably the place you do want to get all of your information. Because if I come down, like, let's have a look at the most infamous one over here, X Chica. You can see all of these builds, right? 7, 1, middle left, 5, which then progresses to 9, 1, top right, 5, and then 11, 5, top left, 3, middle left, 4, bottom left, 4, etc, etc. But to be honest, the best part about this entire guide is the fact that there is so much rationale and so much context. He writes in a way that you really, really understand kind of like the scenarios that they are applicable to. And to be honest, on top of that, he even includes like some of these linked resources. So you can see over here, CB20, C5. If I go ahead and click that, I'm pretty sure it's a Billy Billy video. Yep, there it is. And so we are probably going to watch a loop right here. And so my guys, welcome to the world of loops, right? This is a freaking 12 minute timeline. Like, oh God. So essentially these loop timelines and I am digressing a little bit, but as you can see, like some of these star levels are really freaking insane. Like the gear requirements to make things like this work. You've got the Neneka at three stars. You've got the new is Yui at three stars, the X Chica at three stars, and God knows what freaking gear that X Chica actually has on her. So yeah, this is kind of like the true end game that we're going to be looking at when we get over to this part of the, the life cycle of this game. You can kind of already see, right? He's casting UB after UB after UB, the boss is UB'd, then X Chica is UB'ing, and then the boss is UB'ing again, and then Nanika is UB'ing now, and then we've got New Year's Yui, we've got Anne over here, and then we've got X Chica. Like it doesn't stop. That is why this turns into a freaking 13 minute timeline. And if this kind of thing is up your alley, then this bad boy is 
it is for you. And so hopefully that gives you kind of a good idea in terms of like, oh, if I'm looking for gears and stuff from a casual point of view, all the way to like a 13 minute timeline competitive point of view. We've got some of the more basic guides with some rationale over here from Chocolate as well as uh, Mars. And on top of that, we've got Miss Nyaris. And then from Miss Nyaris, we do have some rationale and some numbers and figures that we can use to create our own conclusions. But if we really want to go full nuclear, full esports, then we also have Chocolate coming in to save the day with the esports guide. And so with that being said, hopefully from here on out, you guys won't brick anything ever again will brick in the context of whatever competitive mode that you are playing against. And the one caveat that I do want to throw in there is that the three of these guides, like these three people, generally speaking, are more oriented towards clan battle. So yeah, I don't feel like all of them are like really, really good for arena. Like obviously they're quite good, but most people in this game do play and focus on clan battle anyway. So it's all good. But to be honest, I would like to see like a PVP variant of all of these. All right. So with all of that, hopefully there aren't going to be any bricks in the future future for you and for me. Because if you have tuned into my live stream recently, you'll know that I instantly bricked my Halloween Misaki on stream like the moment I got her. And then I did the exact same thing for my New Year's Yui. I just hit the optimize button and you can see this one down here. And so with all of that, I want to come at you guys with a secret question. And that is, well, on the spectrum of more casual to competitive, where do you guys actually sit, right? Like for me, I'm still veering on the side of competitive, but I am definitely not on that top end and we're like, oh, we have to pull for New Year's Hiyori. We have to pull for like all of these units. And then on top of that, you have to five star them as well with your DAs. So my guys, let me know where on the spectrum you guys are at. It kind of sounds really weird to say that because spectrum could mean some other things. But anyway, if you guys would let me know down in the comments below, I would really appreciate that because it means you've watched up until the end of the video. So thank you guys so much. But otherwise, if you did like this video or found it helpful, then please like this video. And if you would like to see more, then please consider a subscribe. But otherwise, as your girl Lima once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.